noko falashe basoto leke sanda rabaha sandere rebeke shito lola la bashanda hey y'all hey 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 come on come on i'm waiting on you i'm waiting on you hallelujah hallelujah come on basoto roko falase come on da taba bobo shanta taba basi i kandere rebeke sata taba babashoto Ayamashete rabahasa ndere rebeke sita. Ayamashete ndere rabahale kesete rabasoto. La sondoko la se. Jibebe soto ko babasa tete rabahasoto. La shande ke rabasoto ko basata. Ikando robo boshe ke rabasoto. La sandere rebeke rabahase ndere rebehe shito. Ikandere rebasata. Good morning, good morning. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The enemy is already trying it in these airwaves this morning. He's already trying it in these internet streets this morning. He's already trying it. So you listen to me. Listen to because I ain't got time to play. I ain't got time to set it up. I done set it up in the other video. And we here now. So we got to keep it moving. Let me tell you something. The enemy is here to distract you. He is here to distract you. He is going to send little distractions to get you thrown off. He's going to send little distractions to keep get your eyes off of Jesus and what you're supposed to be doing let me tell you something please hear the spirit of the lord hear the spirit of the lord this morning i'm telling y'all god is working there are suddenlies that are about to come forth there are going to be showers of suddenlies that are about to happen in our lives many of us are saying this is what this is how you know i'm talking to you you are saying, okay, God, I heard what you told me. I, I, I received the promise. God, I got the prophetic word. God, I saw what you showed me in your word. And I grabbed hold to that promise for me. God, I've been doing my part. I be, Listen, I have been praying. I have been seeking you. Some of you are saying, God, I wasn't walking in purpose. I was kind of doing it at a slow pace. But now I'm all in. My, I have a surrender, yes. See, let me explain something to you. You can give God. God a yes and then you could still be doing what you want to do right but when you have a surrendered yes what happens is when you have a surrendered yes you say God not my will but your will be done that's when you're going to start seeing things accelerate at a level that you're not used to. Let me let me help you. Let me let you know that this is uh, you on an accelerated level. You have a greater hunger for the thirst of uh, for the word of God. You thirst for more of him. You want to live right. You want to do right. You, you, you want to walk according to his will, his plan, and his way. You don't want to do the stuff you used to do. It, that stuff that you used to do, that stuff may used to get you excited. It may used to get you look, pull you away from him. But now you're like, no, no, I need to stay focused. Who am I talking to? You may be saying, okay, yes, I did it my way. I was with so-and-so and did what I wanted to do with so-and-so. And that got me what it got me. Nowhere. But now I'm stuck. Now I'm feeling like my world is shaking. Now I'm feeling like what is going on? And this is what God is saying. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I have allowed those things to happen to pull you back. I have allowed certain things to happen in your life to get your attention. When God wants to move in your life, he will do something to get your attention. When he gets your attention, what he is saying, now, I, listen, this is what... I'm about to break you. I'm about to purge. I'm about to cleanse. I'm about to prune. I, listen, I'm getting ready to do something in your life and it's not going to feel good. Nothing feels good when it's being torn down. Sometimes people can see it. Sometimes people cannot. Sometimes he'll do deconstruction. And where is this coming from? Sometimes God can do deconstruction in your life and others will see it. You know how you, you pass by a particular location and you see the building is being torn down. And you're like, oh my goodness, they tearing that building down. God says that's what's happening in some of your lives. People, listen, people are looking at you and they're saying, oh my goodness, what's happening to her? Oh my goodness, this is going on and this is going on. Don't worry about it. Let me tell you something. When you are submitted to God and you have given God your yes, don't worry about the, part, the destruction part. It is not for a loss. It is for rebuilding. Whoa. It is for rebuilding. He's saying, I am getting ready to do something in your life 
that you have never seen before. And I cannot put new wine in old wine skin. Hear me now. Hear me now. I can't put new wine in old wine skin. So what I've got to do is I've got to tear this down. Some of you, he's tearing down old beliefs, religious beliefs and mindsets that you have for years. You thought this particular way and now God is renewing your mind. He's tearing things down. Some of you, it is a belief in yourself. I can't do it. I'm not worthy. I, I just, I don't have the confidence or I don't have the education or I don't have the resources or, or God, I don't know. He's, I, I'm tearing that down, right? He's tearing down old mindsets. He's tearing down wrong thinking. He's tearing down bad behaviors. He's what he's doing is he's coming in on the inside. This is an inside job. This Most of this stuff, people will not be able to see, but you're going to know because you're walking in it. I'm talking to you. You're walking in it now, and you're trying to figure out, God, what is happening? My money is funny, and you're telling me to start a business? You're telling me to start, you know, begin to walk in purpose, and, and, and I, my money ain't looking right. I, 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 you know, I'm, ends are meeting, but they barely get now. It's like, what are you saying? Like, how am I supposed to do this some of you it's about your, your relationships he's saying i need you to keep plowing i need you to keep tilling the ground you may be saying i'm tired this no no this is what you're saying i'm tired calm down calm down when I tell you it's like a burning inside of me to get this word out to you today, I'm telling you right now I understand the distractions. Do not be fooled by the distractions. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? It is the enemy trying to get your eyes off of what you're supposed to be doing He's trying to get you to focus on this little mess that's going on. These little foxes, baby, don't let them spoil no vines. You need to pay attention. God is working. He is working. Do not pay attention to the destruction, whether that's inwardly or outwardly. Some of you, it might be both. You, it might be things in your physical realm that you're feeling like, oh my goodness, like things are crumbling. And it might be things in, in your spiritual, in the spiritual realm, things are crumbling. Don't be, don't, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. I had a situation that popped up yesterday with my family, with my son in particular. And 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 he's a little stressed out about a situation that's happening. And God said, uh-uh, uh-uh. I want you to send them these two scriptures, and then I want you to pray, and then I want you to release them into my hands. He asked me, Mom, can I do something? And I said, I need to think about it. My initial answer was yes. <clears throat> Yes, son, you can come back home. Yes, son, you can. He said, no. Do not give him a yes. <clears throat> Tell him I will think about it. Now, I will be there for you, but my being there for, I don't know who this is for. My being there for you, son, may not be you coming back with me. My being there for you may look differently now in this season. I'm talking to you. Let me just let me just shed this little light on you. Listen, things are crumbling. Things are falling around you. Re again, remember that's in the physical realm. You can see it with your eyes, or that may be in the spiritual realm. You can feel it inwardly. You can feel, you can feel you. Um, let me show you how you how you know that things are 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 falling. They're crumbling in the spirit realm. You're hungry, but you're not. You're eating. You're hungry and you eat something, but you're not being fulfilled. All right, that's a natural thing that's telling you that in the spirit realm, God is calling you to a higher place. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me say that again. Come on, Holy Ghost. You are hungry in the natural because God has to get to us in this because this is how we operate, right? He has to come to us on this level because if he doesn't come to us on this level, we'll miss him in the spirit because we're not attuned to him. That's a whole nother, that's a whole. That's a whole nother conversation. So he'll come to us in the flesh, in a fleshly form, some type of way to get our attention. He'll start messing with stuff in our lives. He'll, he'll start, you know, tampering with stuff. Because you he going to mess it with your money. Oh, you're going to pay attention. And you're going to eventually call on his name. He go to messing with your health. He go to messing with your children. He go to messing with you on your job. He go to mess it. Listen, if God goes to messing with your stuff, you will eventually recognize he's trying to get your attention and sooner or later you'll turn towards him and say god what's up and what he's saying is i am shaking things up in your life because i need to get your attention so you can pivot 
I need you to turn from the way that you're going and I need you to go in another direction. The reason that I need you to go into another direction, daughter, son, is because what I'm getting ready to do in your life, listen to me, listen to me, what I'm getting ready to do in your life, a shift is required in order for you to walk in it. Please hear the spirit of the Lord. God is saying to you today, it may not look like you're going to walk in it. it listen, it doesn't matter what you see with your physical eyes. It's not about your physical eyes. It's about what can you see in the spirit. Let me go back to what I was just mentioning earlier. God said, I gave you a promise. God has spoken something to you, baby. He's spoken something to you. He has given you a word. He has given you a promise. Whether it was through his word, you saw it in his word, and your spirit, listen, it, it caught you on fire when you read it. It could be something that you've read before many times or something you've never even seen. And your spirit, it, it, you just came alive like, oh, oh, like I got that. Like, I got that. Like, I'm going to cause things to happen at the right time. It's over there in Isaiah 43. He says, at the right time, our God will make it happen. Now, you may have seen that before, but this particular time, at this particular season in your life, you don't just see it with your eyes, but you see it in your spirit. When you see God's word in your spirit, it hits differently. It takes on a new meaning. What happens is God begins to speak to your spirit man, which is the man that is always alive because your flesh is dead. God, you better talk this morning. Your flesh is dead. So your flesh cannot hear. This is why you do not listen to your flesh because your flesh is dead. It is constantly dying. You should be putting your flesh to death every day. If your flesh outrules your spirit, you will never get closer to God because you, flesh cannot be present in his presence. Is is it can you you got to die? So what God is doing is He's saying, I have given you a promise, and because you're looking at the promise through your physical eyes, you can't see me moving. That's it, somebody. God is saying to you today, I need you to stop looking at it through your physical eyes, and I need you to catch it in the spirit. Listen to me. You are looking at that marriage through your physical eyes. These eyes. And he's saying, and the reason that you talk to your spouse the way that you do, you speak to your spouse the way that you do, you talk to your children, your, your, your employees, your employer. The, the reason that you exhibit the behavior that you do is because you're looking at the situation from your physical eyes. Are you hearing me? He says, I need you to stop looking at it from a physical standpoint. And I need you to stop looking. I need you to start looking at it from a spiritual standpoint. Let me explain why that's important. Come on, God. The reason it is important for you to shift your perspective and your position when it comes to what God is doing, Esther. It is because God is saying when you shift your perspective, right? When you begin to look at things from the spiritual realm, you see from my vision. You see vision, right? You don't see sight. You see vision. This is why he said, I need you to walk by faith and not by sight. Are you hearing me? He says that because he understands that because of the flesh, the human part of you, you are automatically going to adhere to, uh, uh, you're going to depend on your five senses. You're going to depend on your sight. You're going to depend on what you hear with these ears. You're going to depend on what you feel. You're going to depend on what you taste. What's the other one? You're going you're gonna to depend on what you uh, <clears throat> see, hear, taste, feel. Uh, I can't think of the fifth one. Somebody help me. You, you're depending on your five senses, right? He says, that's why, you're, that's why you haven't stepped into the realm that I'm taking you. That's all. I heard you. He said, no, 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 Justin, I'm not taking them. It's already prepared. 
When God told Abraham, I need you to get up and I need you to go to a place that I'm going to show you. The reason that he told Abraham this, he told Abraham this is because where he was, which was currently in Haran, right? He was in Haran, which is where he went to with his daddy. God had previously told Abraham before, listen, he had previously spoken to Abraham at another time. Listen, Abraham, I need you to get away from your people, from what's familiar, from what's comfortable, from what you know, and I need you to go to a place that I'm going to show you. The place, there it is, smell, thank you. The place where Abraham currently was, was not God's best for him. It was good, it was a, it was a good place, but it wasn't his best. Let me explain. It was a place, Ur of the Chaldeans, right? It was a place that it was full of idolatry, but at the same time, it was lush and plush. That means it had lots of good things there. You got to be very careful. I'm talking to you. Uh-uh, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. You got to be very careful that you do not remain in places that God never told you to settle in. You Listen, he told you to have forward movement. Some of you done got stuck. That's it. You done got stuck in a place and settled in a place that God never told you to settle in. He said, you're just passing through. I'm talking to somebody. I need to shift. Somebody say shift. I got to shift this because there's somebody that I need to tell this to. You done let that job keep you there. And God says, that is not Canaan. That is, that is just a place that you were supposed to be passing through to get to where I told you to go. Who am I talking to? I'm <laughs> allergies to bind you right now. Who am I talking to? Some of you done got stuck. No, he said you ain't stuck. You done settled. This is exactly why Wanda, this is exactly why Tara, Abraham's father, died in Haran. He died in Haran. Come on, Kim Larry. He died in Haran because that's listen, even though God told him to go to them to go to Canaan, he died in Haran because he got comfortable there. Where have you gotten comfortable? The promise. Say it nicely, J.C. and Marlisa. Say it nicely. The promise of God. God told me this the other day. And I really was trying to figure out what he was meaning. Because the way that he said it didn't make much sense until I pondered about it. I started pondering on it. God says, Latasha, this is what God says. Many of my children have settled for the blessing instead of reaching for the promise. Let me say it again. Many of us have settled for the blessing. That means good things are happening. For, for some, my bills are being paid. Okay, at least I, you know, <clears throat> I got, you know, a little something left over. You know, things are good in my life right now. You know, fingers crossed, you know. <laughs> Everything is good. I, you know, I'm just going to, hey, praise the Lord. You've gotten comfortable. Huh. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you. The Holy Spirit said, when you get comfortable... It's what you are able to do. When you get comfortable, hear this. It's what you are able to do on your own. Jesus. He says, I don't remain in places of comfort. Because there's no growth there. There's no stretching there. This is why things are being shaken up in your life because God is saying to you, oh, you done got comfortable there. You done got comfortable in that job. You done got comfortable in that relationship that really, I, that's not even what you were supposed to be in. And I'm, I'm talking to the singles, but mm -hmm, I'm going to leave that alone. You are in situations that were okay for the moment, but they were not supposed to be for an extended period of time and definitely not a lifetime. Who am I talking to? You have listen. Do you know that you can get you can become okay with being sick? 
you could become okay with having just enough. God ain't never told us we were supposed to have just enough. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says you're supposed to have just enough. What does it say? He said, I have come, Jesus, I have come, that you, who? You and me, that we may have life. Life means everything that exists on this earth. That you may have life and that you may have it what? More abundantly. If you are not living in the more abundantly, you not live. You ain't living. You're existing, but you ain't living. Because <laughs> God never said that you're supposed to have just enough. He said, I've come that you may have abundance, overflow. That means I have enough for me and I got enough to be a blessing to somebody else. He said, he said to Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a great nation so that you could do what? Bless others. He doesn't bless us just for us. Do you understand? This is why it is so important for us to support one another. It is the way of the world. How are people supposed to know about me when my when my circle is small? I don't care how, how many numbers is in it, it's still small. But if 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 you know me <coughs> and you tell so and so about me, and then they tell so and so about me, and then the, it keeps it, it becomes a domino effect, then my 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 reach becomes expansive. It grows. It is enlarged. This is why J-Bass said, listen, enlarge my territory. You need to start praying that on a daily basis. God, enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. Help me not to just be focused on me and mine or just my people or just my circle. Let me tell you something God showed me the other day. He said, Jacina, you think that you're called to black women, and you are so mistaken. He showed me this at a, at a staff meeting on my job. He said, I need you to take the limits off of the gifts and the callings that I placed upon your life. You're not just called to black women. You're not just called to Orlando. You live in Orlando currently, but you ain't, you're not just called to Orlando. Catch this. He says, when you limit me, because you can't see. When you limit me and you put me in a box, he says, I can only move. I can only do, come on God. I can only do as much as you would allow me to do. I can only uh, 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 expand as much as you're giving me room for. Oh, shit. My God. He said, I need you to get put, let, let me out of this box. I need you to let me out of this box you got me in. What box have you put? I don't know. Wait, baby. What box have you put God in that has limited your ability to do all that he's called you to do and all that he's called you to be. Baby, because if Boaz is why I want him. See, I ain't one of them people, baby. Listen, the Lord has done a great work in me. When I say great, I mean great work. I have literally said, God, I know you know my desires. But my whole purpose for living is so that my desires line up with yours. Right? The more that you pray that, the more that you believe that, the more that you settle in that, your will, not mine. Your way, not mine. The more that you delight yourself in him, it is true that he will give you the desires of your heart because guess what? Your heart has been cleansed. Your heart has been purified from what you want to what he wants. 
Am I making sense? God is saying to us, I need you to let me out of this box. I've called you to a place. You, you don't know where that place is, but you need to start stepping. Some of you, you're watching me. You're watching this video. You're watching this live. And you are afraid to take a step because I don't know. I don't know the when, the what, the where, the who, the why, the how. I don't know all of the things. You don't need to. Abraham didn't, but he trusted God enough to take a step. What is it that God has told you to do and you haven't done yet? Now, oh, I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, if, if things are crumbling, if, if things are being shaken in your life right now, right? If things are happening in your life and you don't, you can't make sense of it, right? You don't understand, like, where is this coming from? You may be saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not out here living any kind of way. I mean, I, I mean... God, I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to live right. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you something. If you are not being obedient to what he has told you, you are, you are walking in disobedience. Even if you halfway do it, you are walking in disobedience. Do you understand? You can't halfway walk with God. You're either all in or you're not. And that's why many of us, we're, we're crying and we're, 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 we're fussing and pouting and complaining about the weight. And God's saying, no, you waiting because you ain't ready. You're, you're not ready. You're not waiting on me. I'm ready to give you. I'm ready to give you what I promise. But you're not ready to receive it. If God was to give us the things that we have prayed for in the condition that some of us are currently in, we would lose it. Let me give you an example. If you're bad with your money, you spend everything you got. You don't know how to save. You 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 and you don't know how to give. Right? You got to be both. You got to be a giver and you have to be a saver. You have to be able to give out of your abundance to someone else that does not have. And then you have to save so that you can store up for, you know, a rainy day. Right? I'm listening. God says when you do not walk according to his word, right? If he's telling you to, to do a certain thing with your money and, you, and you're just spinning it up, your eyes, again, your flesh, your eyes see this and I got to have it. Uh, or, or, or you smell this or, or you hear about this. Oh, I got to have it. I got to have it. He says what happens is you limit what I'm able to do because you choose to walk in, walk in and in your flesh instead of by the spirit. The spirit will tell you, you don't need that. Don't buy that. I know you want that, but you don't need it. You need to put that money up or you need to sow into so-and-so. Some of you, he'll tell you, you know, be a blessing to Jacina or be a blessing to so-and-so and you won't do it. But then you'll wonder why, why am I tired? Why I just got a flat to, what happened? That what you don't do when when you are not obedient to God, there is a consequence outside of him. Let me say that again. When you are not obedient to God, if God tells you to do something and you say, no, I'm not going to do it, there's going to be a consequence outside of him. Because now you're outside of you're outside of his will because he's told you to do something and you haven't done it. What is he, this? And, and, and so it's like you say, God, I want a million dollars. I want to win a lottery. God, you know, I want this astronomical amount of money. God said, I'm not about to bless you with no astronomical amount of money because I know you're going to blow it. See, you, you have not submitted your will to mine. This is why your desires are all jacked up. You haven't submitted your will to mine. How do you know? Because you got more wants. You, you, if you have a lot of wants, your, your will isn't submitted to the Father. Because when you, when you are submitted to the Father, you understand He's going to give me everything I need. And then if there are some desires that I have, they'll just come. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, oh, that's good. I won't seek those desires through my five senses. Listen, I'll just think of something and God will bless me when I'm aligned with Him. Many of you, I'm going to tell you something right now. I know you don't want to hear it, but somebody's got to tell you. Might as well be who? Me. 
many of us are not seeing the promises of God in our life because we are not, you, you are disobedient in an area in your life. You're either disobedient, you're either comfortable, or you put him in a box. Those are the three things that he's speaking to us this morning. Which one have you done? You are not obedient. That means you're not doing what God has told you to do. Let me help you. Okay, because I heard that. Maybe you're saying, well, I did start the business. Or I did, you know, start going to school. Or I did, you know, leave that relationship. All right, but you're still in contact with the individual. You still let them call you. you, you you're still texting. You're still... <laughs> That's good. You're still operating in the flesh in some form. Mm -hmm. Does you under, do you understand? You understand? Right? Okay, let me, say, let me give you another example. Okay. Your marriage... Your marriage, you're having some problems in your marriage, right? Okay? You're having some problems with your children. You're having some problems in some type of relationship, right? And God keeps telling you to pray. Okay? I need you to pray or I need you to fast or I need you to, I need you to, uh, 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 you know, speak with, with, with uh, grace. I need you to, you know, he's, he's giving you specific things to do with this individual, Right? What you do is you will call you will call Kim and say, Kim, can you pray for my marriage? Mm -mm. He didn't say call Kim and ask Kim to pray. He said you pray. But what has happened is you've gotten in your feelings. Again, you're walking in some form of the flesh. You've got in your feelings, and so your feelings are telling you what to do. And you're listening to your feelings, your flesh, instead of obeying God. And so now you're saying, well, it's not getting any better. Well, no, it's not because you are not obeying the word of God. Instead, you're not, you're not obeying the spirit of God. You're obeying, you're obeying the flesh. Listen, y'all. <clears throat> this is so clear to me. You cannot pray and ask God for a thing. And then when he tells you how to do the thing, you book the system. You tell him, I don't want to do that. God, you don't know what he did, or you don't know what they did, or you don't know how this was. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. It doesn't make sense to you. It doesn't make sense to me to be kind to a person that is mean to us. But God says, listen, wives, listen. God says, you're going to win that man over <coughs> by your lifestyle, not your mouth. Let me say it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know and I got my own stuff. God says you're not going to win him over, daughter, by your mouth. <clears throat> you're going to win him over by your lifestyle. What does that mean? How you live on a daily basis. I'm going to plug this in real quick because it's an example of everyday life and it's the best way that I see that we can to explain what he's saying. Okay, so for example, you go to church on Sunday. <coughs> you go to Bible study. He, let's say, you're, let's take it even further. He may not be going to church with you and you begging him to go. Come to church with me. Come to church with me. <laughs> this is what they be doing. This is what this is what they this is what they're thinking. Why do I need to go to church with you if you're going to church and you doing all this at church and you crying and all of this carrying on, but then you come home and you shows your behind. You still talk to me in any kind of way, but you go up there and talk to the pastor. You're just as sweet as you could be. You go over there and you talk to your, you know, your sister in Christ, your brother in Christ. Oh, you're just so nice. Hey, you know, I mean, you're just so loving and sweet and kind and patient and gentle. But you come home and you like raising pure hell. I mean, you off the chain. You saying whatever you want to say, and because I'm sick of this. Uh, but you have, you have great self. You have great self control. With others, but you have no self-control with me. They're saying, I'm not going to church with you. 
because you're going in a building <clears throat> and you change when you go in the building but the church is not a building the church is supposed to be you <laughs> and you're not acting right but you want me to go to a church which I'm not going anywhere with you yeah I don't know it's just it's tight but it's right and it's and it's very real it's very relevant <laughs> they're not going they're not listening they're literally blinded listen you cannot do things in the flesh and expect for God to move in the spirit it's, it's, it's contradictory you, you, it ain't gonna happen somebody's got to change and it ain't, it's, it's not God <laughs> it's you. It's me. I literally have been asking God two things. God, if there's anything that I'm doing or anything that I have done that I have not asked for forgiveness for, that I have not repented from, that I have not turned away from, if it's anything that I'm doing in my life that's keeping me from receiving your best for me, the promise, because remember, the blessing the blessing is is good. You, you you're gonna you, you're gonna be all right with the blessing. But God didn't just promise you the blessing, baby. He prom he he gave you a promise. That means he gave you something that super super exceeds the blessing. It's an Ephesians three twenty type of situation. It's a I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. But this is the part of the text that we leave off. I wish somebody could find it. Can you go to Ephesians 3.20? Because see, as a teacher, sometimes we talk too much. We, we, we be so excited about the lesson <laughs> and what we're teaching that, that we don't let you uh, uh, research and, and, and dig a little bit. I want you to look it up. I want you to look it up real quick. Ephesians 3.20. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's that latter part for me. It's the latter part for me. It hits differently. Uh, we don't. We don't. It, God even told me this. He said, "I need you to start reading the before and the after text." Right. So, so <laughs> he challenged me this morning because I was listening to a broadcast um, as I was getting dressed, and um, they mentioned John three sixteen. I'm, I'm giving you a minute to find Ephesians three twenty. He he and and of course we know John three sixteen is for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and God said now what 17 said and I was like I I don't know <laughs> he said that's the problem and I was like well why I mean it's particular he said that is the problem you will memorize you will memorize particular key scriptures but you have no context as to what I was saying before I said what I said and after I spoke what I had spoken baby come come don't come for me God says I need you to stop being these little shallow baby Christians that's milk you're still on milk he says come up I need you to know what I said before and what I said afterwards so you can put it together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and then you can marinate on that Come on, Kim Lyra. God says, you are going to see the exceedingly abundant. That means you're not going to just be blessed. You're going to be blessed to where it overflows. I, listen, I'm about to do something so big, it's going to blow your natural and your spiritual mind. He says, but it's going to be according to the power that worketh in you. What does that mean, Jacina? Some of you, you believe what God said, but not enough to act on what he's spoken. That's why you don't see the promise. This is why you only get a blessing. You get a blessing because you're like, oh, okay, I believe what God said. You know, you're excited about it. And you know, you do a little something. And then now you, but you're doing other stuff. Those little areas of disobedience. See, when you believe what God said, when you believe what God truly, no, when we believe what God truly says, and we begin to line our life up with his word, because his word is his will. You want to know what God's will is? You got to get this. This is, 
This is God's will. You keep saying, well, I don't know what God wants me to do. What did he say in his word? Whatever he said in here, this is his will. This, most of us don't know what he said because we're not reading it. You let somebody else tell you what it said. Baby, you don't even let me get on to that. I'm not going to even go there. He said, this is why many of my Christians are uh, uh, illiterate. They, they only have knowledge, but they don't have no wisdom. Because they keep going to be fed by somebody else instead of fed by me. I'm about to go. <sighs> Some of this stuff. <laughs> God says, you don't know what I said. How are you going to walk in what I said if you don't know what I said? You got to stop getting your food from other people. Listen, your mama taught you this. I know your mama. If you black and you watching this, I know your mama taught you this. Your mama taught you not to be eating at everybody's house. You cannot be going to everybody's house getting eaten or you're going to get sick. Many of us are not seeing the promises of God in our lives because there is no power working in us. What do you mean there's no power working in us? Ephesians 3.20 says, I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask, think, imagine, believe, all of that, right? He says, but it's going to be according to the power that worketh in you. That power is what are you doing with what I've spoken? What are you doing with what I've said? If God told you to start something and you still waiting for more instructions, if he is, if he is, get, God is never going to tell you to start something without giving you something to start with. He's not gonna give, he's not gonna give you instructions and leave you clueless. Okay, he wants me to go back to the example with the husband and the wife. If God is telling you to pray for that relationship, treat them well, you know, do all the things that he's telling you to do, and you're choosing to do half of that, he says you're walking in disobedience. And I listen, I cannot fulfill the promise. I can, I can, I can, now nah, I can shower you with some blessings. That ain't nothing. I, and, and I believe, ooh, that's good. I believe that God showers us with little blessings to, to, to increase our faith, right? To like build our hope concerning that thing. He'll say, so, so you're not doing everything. I, I told you to fast, but you just want to pray. Or, or, you know, I, I told you to do this, but you're only doing, you know, you're only doing a piece of what I told you. But I'm going to bless you anyway. I'm going to bless you anyway because I see, I see that you're trying, that you're attempting to make, you know, some progress, but you're not there. You, you're not really there because you want a solution. Because if you want me to solve this, you'll do what I told you to do. <sighs> you'll do what I told you to do. Stop saying, I'm waiting on God. You are not waiting on God. You done got comfortable. And again, sometimes we can get comfortable in the wrong place. What, did that, what does that mean? You can get comfortable believing God to be healed when you're still sick. That means you can get comfortable being sick. You can be alright with it. Even though you're saying, I believe God for my healing. Well, if you're sick enough and you and you get enough help, you get enough attention, you get enough of whatever it is that you that you, that your flesh is, is is craving or seeking, oh, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. I know you, you you're like what? Yeah. You you also, Beverly. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, sis. You also listen to me. I know you don't think I'm right, but just think about it for a minute. You could be in a bad relationship. I'm telling you, whether that's romantic or platonic or anything in between. If it gives you a little bit of something that you want, it could be a little bit of something that you want. You'll stay in it. You'll get comfortable in it. And you won't seek the promise. You'll settle for the blessing. You'll settle for the sprinkles. I don't want no sprinkles. I don't want no sprinkles of blessings. I want to walk in the whole promise. Let me tell you the difference between sprinkles of blessings and walking in the promise of God. When 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 blessings are sprinkled, you know, 
you know, a couple people say, oh, child, look at her. Oh, girl, she looking good. Da, 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 da. But when, when God fulfills the promise of God in your life, everybody going to know. Not only would everybody know, but they're going to be telling your story for you. They'll be like, girl, did you hear about what happened to J.C. and my Lisa? Girl, J.C. and my Lisa been on there talking about her man for years, honey. And that man done showed up and baby, he is all the things. <laughs> he is all the things, honey. That girl was talking about a man and she didn't even have one. But baby, she was confessing, professing, and then she began to line her life up according to the word of God concerning that prayer, concerning what she was believing God for. That means I can't be out here in situationships. I can't be out here connected with anybody because he's a nice person, baby. I'm not looking for a nice person. And sir, if me and you have had any type of interaction, I am not saying anything negative about you. I'm just saying I'm not looking for a nice person. I'm waiting for my husband. I don't need nice. I need kingdom. Do you understand? If you are not kingdom minded, if I can't see you in my life as it relates to the kingdom, there will be no closeness. We won't be getting connected. Now, we may be acquainted, but we will not be connected. Do you understand? I hear you. I just heard you so clear. Did you hear that? God said, many of you are not. Listen. You are not seeing my hand on your life in the way that you know that I told you because you got people close to you that, that shouldn't be close. Let me explain. <laughs> you got people that are connected to you that are supposed to be acquaintances. And, and this is what we do. Then we get upset when they don't support us. Then we get upset when they're not there for us. Then we get upset when they, when, 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 well, she can't never come to my stuff. Or I, whenever I call her, she ain't never available. Or he's never available. Or this and that. And this and that. Baby, you done put them people in the wrong position. You, you done put them people in the wrong position in your life. God ain't never told you to get them that close to you because they're not kingdom minded. They're worldly minded. And let's not mistake just because they're Christians. If Let me explain something to you. <laughs> People that are close to me, they are walking in purpose. If you are not walking in purpose, I can't let you that close. You, you, you can't have no VIP pass. You're going to be out there in the general admission. Cannot have no VIP. And you, you, you're not walking in purpose because you're going to harm me. You're going to harm me. You're going to distract me. You're going to deter me. You're going to, listen, you're going to devour me. You're going to do something that I cannot afford for you to do in my life with the, with the, with the knowledge and the wisdom that I currently have. Baby, no. I, I got to go. I got to go. What time is it? Did you hear what I said? Some of you are connected to people. That you got no business connected to. You need to discontinue the service. I had to call at and I really didn't want to because I, I really felt like, you know, they had some good service. But they was too high. They was costing me too much. And I said, you know what? I need, I need to switch. But I never really did anything about it. But in my heart, I kept saying, I really need to make this switch. I was just in Walmart and, you know, just walking around Walmart, which is the wrong thing to do. You need to have a list when you go to Walmart. God knows you need to have one when you go to Target. But I'm walking around in Walmart. I just went in there real quick to pick up a couple things. But it never works out like that. I declare it never works out. I went in there to pick up a couple things, right? And I was trying to get up out of there. I was trying to get up out of there, and here come this guy, James, out of nowhere. James comes popping up out of nowhere. And James is like, ma'am, what service do you have? I was like, sir. But I was so nice this time, because usually I'd be like, mm-mm, and I walk off. But I was like, sir, I have direct TV and AT&T, sir. And he said, well, ma'am, let me tell you about what we have. I said, who are you with, James? I mean, sir, who are you with, and what is your name? He said, my name is James. And we went through the, you know, the conversation. And basically... He was like, how much you pay? At the time, I was paying like 200 and something dollars. Don't even ask me how. 200 and something dollars for AT&T and direct TV, cable and internet. First of all, I don't even watch TV like that. I don't even watch it like that. Why am I paying this astronomical price for TV? And I don't even, I'm, I'm confused. I watch YouTube. I watch, you know, apps, you know, 
Netflix or you know I watch certain things I don't even watch TV he said ma'am we can I can get you on this plan I said how long that's gonna be because y'all know how y'all do y'all start off real good but then y'all switch up just like people do start off real good and then you know midway in now I got you know attached to you now you switch up stay with me because I'm going somewhere he said, ma'am, you could change your service at any time. You're not on contract. I said, say that again. He said, you're not under contract. I said, bet. What you got? Not only do I get internet, right? Now, this internet is digital. There are no boxes and all of this. It's, you know, one main box is digital. So far, it's been okay. Um, but I get a home phone. I wanted a home phone. I mean, I'm just old school. I'm like, because if something happened, I want to be able to have a phone. But then I thought, oh, let's connect it to the internet. So, baby, y'all hold on. I don't know who this is, but they fit. Hold on a minute. I am at work. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, child. I have to get my life together because I do be like, you is at these people. <laughs> Like, baby, you got to stay up to that door because you got these people. Chill. This is why I'm waiting for the Lord the great transition. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. I don't even know what I was talking about. See what I'm saying? <laughs> so I got ADHD in the spirit sometimes. I rebuke that. No, you do not have ADHD in the spirit. Stop that. You better watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. <sighs> Y'all, I have to get my... I have it sure is it rubber. <laughs> they don't want me to be great. Thank you. Not under contract. What I get with Spectrum, I get a mobile phone that I have to pay no service for for a year. The service will be like $29 when I, when I do get past my year. I just got a new phone. I just got a new Android. I love it too, y'all. I love my Android. I love it. But I just got a new phone for my business, right? And these people I'm dating because I don't want to get my real phone. But anyway, this is for, I don't pay nothing for this phone. The only thing I'm paying for is for the phone itself and it's like $20. I think it's less than that. I think it's like $14, $13 for a brand new phone. What's your point, Jacina? Some of you all are comfortable in situations that are costing you too much. Oh, I know you think, I know y'all think I'd be over here, but baby, he always brings me back because this is his word. This is his channel. This is his studio time. This is him. I'm just letting him use me. Some of you Many of you that are watching me right now, you have gotten comfortable in these contracts that you have created with people. You've made contracts with your mouth. You've made contracts with promises that you've made to people that you had no business making. And God has, number one, never told you to get involved with them in the first place. And now you wonder why your life looks like hell. Some of you are going through unnecessary warfare because of the people that you're connected to. You know it, but you won't disconnect. Now, I just heard you. Just calm yourself down. I just heard you say, well, that's my spouse. All I have to say for that, and, I, and it's not going to sound good. And, and you know what? It's not intended to sound good. It really isn't. It really isn't. But I'm going to say it because it has to be said. And you can take it up with the Lord. Or you can call me. I don't care. Whatever. But it's really not. It's not me and you. It's you and him. You married them. That's, that's the message. You married them. So whatever is going on. You said until death 
for better, for work, for sick, little mo Yeah, you, you said yes to that. See, this is why <clears throat> I used to look at dating as a horrible thing. And God says, as long as you have the perspective that you have, you're never going to get what you desire. You got to shift your perspective. It's all about perspective. This is why he says you got to renew your mind. The more you renew your mind, the better you're going to be able to see things from his angle. Chickens do this. Eagles do this. When you are pessimistic, you are a chicken. You don't ever hear about no eagles being fried and eaten. That's a whole other story, oh, baby. God is saying, what contracts have you gotten yourself into that I never told you to get into? And now you're wondering why you don't see my promises. I'm just sprinkling these little blessings, but you're not seeing my promise come to pass in your life. And you're getting upset with me because you're not seeing the promise, but you never, you, you never... You never asked me before you got into that situation. You, but now that you've gotten into it, of course now, you know, especially if things are crumbling and shaking, of course you want God now. You say, but where where was I in the in the where was I in the whole thing when you was getting, you know, hooked up and y'all you were starting the thing? Where was I? Bottom line, if you're married, you got to go back to the one that you're in covenant with and you are in covenant the two of you are in covenant with God so in order to see the solution to the problem that you're having in your situation you're going to have to go back to the creator you're going to have to go back to him whatever that means whatever he tells you to do you're going to have to do it you cannot be halfway obedient because half obedience is disobedience it's like you can't tell a white lie it's a whole lie it's a lie whether it's white or black Hell, it's a lie. It's a, I mean, come on, we're not doing this no more. Get off that titty and get on, sit your behind in this in chair. We're not in no high chairs with no bibs on no more. We're not lifting up mama's shirt and sucking on no titties no more. Baby, you, you got to get off them titties. I said it. You got to get on some real food. That means you got to chew. Chew on that word and get all of the nutrients from it so that when you digest it properly because if you chew too fast and you eat it you're going to cause problems you're going to get constipated you're going to be backed up you're going to be bloated you oh some of y'all bloated christians and you wonder mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. baby that's a word jesus constipated christians Sitting in high chairs, drinking milk, and you're wondering why you're not walking in the promises of God. God does not fulfill promises for babes. He fulfilled promises for mature men, for mature women, those that are that are eating and walking in the meat of the word. He wouldn't give promises to a babe. They're not mature enough to handle it. The other prayer that I pray besides God, show me if there's anything in my life that's keeping your promise from being fulfilled in my life. The other thing that I pray for is God, please prepare me for what I'm praying for. I know that I'm praying for this, but can you prepare me for what I'm praying for? Because if I'm not prepared, when I get it, I'm going to lose it. It's like that money. If you're not a good steward over your money, if you don't do well with your money, if you got a large sum of money, it's going to go so quick because you're not a good steward over it. So he's saying, some of you, I cannot give you certain relationships. I cannot give you certain businesses. I can't, I can't move in certain ways in your life because if I do right now with the mentality that you have, with the behaviors and the patterns and the, and the, uh, uh, you know, the unhealed areas, the wounds, the bleeding that you have, you're going to bleed on them people. 
And I didn't get them. They didn't go through healing and, and deliverance and get their breakthrough for you to now bleed on them because you're not well. No, I'm not doing that. So you, I, you, And for some of you, it may not even be you that's bleeding. It may be them. He may be saying, I done healed you, girl. I done bought you up out of hell, up out of the muck, the mire, and the clay. And you mean, I'm not putting you with just no anybody. You got to wait. As a matter of fact, some of you ain't even got to wait. You're hidden. You, you, I'm telling you, I was asking God, they're like, like, is you got some kind of veil over me? He said, absolutely. Yes, I do. Mm, you done came on at the right time. He says, yes, I have a veil over you. They can't even see you. And you mad because you, you out here stunting, looking good, beautiful, baby, hair laid, ash, uh, lashes done. <clears throat> they touching the sky and everything. You got your brows done up. Baby, you looking good. Whether you're snatched or you just got it all hanging out like me. It is what it is because I'm not putting on all that stuff. It's too hot. It's too hot. I live in Florida. It's too hot. I don't care if I move north. I'm not putting on all that stuff. I'm giving you the body that I got because this is what you're going to see every day. So ain't no need of me snatching this up. Now, if we go out somewhere real nice, I'll snatch it up. But you're going to get this body that I got. I've been working hard, and this is what it is. Like, like oh, seriously. That's it. You're hidden. You're hidden because I can't just give anybody access to you. You're called. You're set apart. You can't be out here with anybody. They're not kingdom ready. They're not kingdom minded. They're not kingdom focused. Do you know you could be unequally old with a Christian? We ain't taught that. We taught, oh, if they're not a believer, you know, sometimes some of these believers might be more equally old than these Christians. Because if you're Christian and you don't desire to live right, y'all is unequal to y'all. I know you don't want to hear it, but baby, somebody got to tell you, and it might as well be me. God says, stop murmuring and complaining because you looking at it as rejection. It's not rejection. It's my protection. I'm protecting you. When you go to the store, when you go to certain stores, they have, they have glass. They have glass cabinets. Umwars that they lock. It's the reason that they have a lock. Because they realize just anybody can come up and get it. You even see that now in stores like Walmart, CVS. They have certain things that are locked now. You got to go actually get someone to assist you with it. God says you're locked. You're behind the glass. You're not on the shelf like this. See, I can just go up there and pick, you know, just pick something off the shelf. He says, no, you're behind the glass. They got to come to me and through me to get to you. And you upset with God because they got to. Baby, you better be shouting and praising God because that means he's saving you from a whole lot of unnecessary. Because this is what he's saying. You weren't able to discern and see that for yourself. So I had to do it for you. I'm getting ready to go. You say, yeah, you couldn't see it for yourself, so I had to do it for you. Now with some of us, that's, that's yeah, he's saying... If I let you have your way, you'll you be hooked up with, you know, somebody you ain't got no business hooked up with because you're looking at external things. Girl, I'm, I'm, I'm always kingdom. God told me the other day, you're ready. You're ready now because you understand that your marriage is for the kingdom. Your marriage is not for, for, for the earth. What is the earth? The earth is you. Remember, we came from the earth. So he's saying... You're, you're not earthly. You're not earthly minded. You're kingdom minded. And so you understand if you meet someone, although they may be a nice person, if they don't fit, if they don't fit, they can't just fit, you know, oh, we have good conversation. Conversation is not going to matter when you're walking in purpose and they are not. You're unequally yoked. If you meet somebody and you say that you're a Christian and you are walking in your purpose and this individual is not, you 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 got some you got some pondering that you need to be doing. You got some praying that you need to be doing. You don't just say, "Oh yeah, we ready." No, you're not because if this person does not know what their purpose is and they are not or they're not trying to walk towards it, like you need to see something. Baby, when you get 40, 50, even 60 years old, some of you, 70, you ain't got time to be um talking about no potential. Potential is for people in their 20s. And maybe 30s. Mm, yeah. 40 and up. Potential. No. 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 
No. I need to see what you're working with. You don't have a place. I have a place. I mean, you're going to get married, and you, you want me to come live with you, and you don't have a place. That's, that's, you're, I'm lacking safety and stability. Two things that my father provides. Listen, they will, I don't know why I'm talking to the singles now. Hey, y'all. God told me, Jacina, he will, he will exhibit the characteristics that I have. You will know it's him because he will look like me. What do I mean? He will have patience with you. He will have grace for you. Listen, he will be walking in purpose, on purpose. He will be very intentional about you. You won't have to wonder if he loves you. You won't have to wonder if you're his first choice. You won't have to wonder. Like you don't have to wonder how much I love you. You don't have to wonder that you're the apple of my eye. You won't have to wonder with him. You, oh, you will know where he stands all the time. He'll be ve he will be very clear about it. He'll be walking in purpose because he understands that when he walks in purpose that my hand is upon his life. How is he going to lead you somewhere that I haven't led him first? I'm getting ready to go. See, mm -hmm. See, you get this kind of conversation from your daddy when, when that thing gets intimate. When you're connected. When you're just following. Honey, it was a lot of people that followed Jesus. But baby, they stoned. They, listen, they was one of the ones that was stoning him. And talking about crucify him on, on that on Palm Sunday. Tell them why you can't have followers. You got to have connections. Followers have their place. But I can't get, I can't be connected to followers. I don't have time. It's going to be too costly. You saw what it cost Jesus. It cost him his life. The followers cost him his life. Those were, that were connected, they were at that cross. Devastated. If you round people and stuff happening to you and they're not devastated, they're not concerned, they're not trying to help you, they, they're not upset, you, you, you're connected to the wrong people. Let me go. Father, we thank you for this time today. I need my breakfast for these churn come finish reading my little word, reading your great word. Thank you, Lord. I'm just grateful. I'm just, I'm telling you, I, I'm grateful that you choose to use me. I'm grateful that, you know, for those that have hung out with us this morning, even those that passed through, even those that did a little drive-by. Thank you, because I know they got something when they drove by. However, I, God, just send this word out. Send it out. Send it out to the masses. Send it out. Bless those that hear it and act on it. I pray that you bless every person. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and give you his peace. May he be gracious to you. I pray that God will cover, keep, and protect you, you and your family, and everything that's connected to you. I pray that favor goes before you, blessings surround you, and goodness, grace, and mercy follow you all the days of your life. And I pray that you get your life together. That if you're comfortable, that you seek God. Because if you're comfortable, he's going to shake you up and make you uncomfortable so that you can walk in the next level. I pray that you won't settle. You won't settle for blessings, showers of blessings, but you will stand in and stand up for him to do and, and bring forth his promise in your life. Promises are much greater than blessings because promises means it's not just about you, but it's about for generations to come. Hallelujah. And I pray that you would let, you would remove the box just tear the whole box down god cannot do everything that he wants to do in your life and you got him in a box because you think too small he needs you to come up needs you to come higher so that you're that you can see it from his perspective and last but not least you need to pay attention to your connections everybody that you connected to you shouldn't be you need to go back to you need to go back to the father some of you don't even need to go back to the father you need to just look What deposits are they making in your life? Are they making more withdrawals than deposits? Those are not connections. Those are followers. You need to make some adjustments. All right? Have a good weekend. I love y'all. He loves you more. I'll see you on Monday. Yeah. All right. Have a good weekend. Bye.